I want to share with you a story about love and heaven, marriage, dreams. And I think there's a reason why young girls and young boys grow up dreaming and having hope and they want to escape. And in the sleep, they find a place of escape. And, and the Lord is a, he, he's a comforter. I mean, there's a lot of people that will sleep their problems away, and there's a reason why. It's I, I do not want to demonize anybody. Some of you have lived through some experiences. You, you don't know the love of a parent, the compassion, the care of a friend. It's it's very difficult. And you know, there's a whole lot of people out there have missed out on that that kind of relationship. I want to share with you something very beautiful about dreams and how the Lord has show me stories in his dreams and and some of them are pretty magnificent and I, i'm just sharing you with experiences which isn't really just what i've dreamt but just what i what i see for some people it's they they're, they're caught up in drugs and addiction or they're living in a relation they're living with somebody and they don't want to disobey god they want to be out of that relationship and they want to be right with jesus where they want to be with Jesus, but they don't know how to communicate that. And that's where a lot of us are at. You might be in a relationship with somebody, but it's a conflict because sex and engaging in a relationship outside of sex is really what God doesn't want. He wants us to honor him first. And for some of us, that's very hard for us to accept because we're still human beings and there's no, you can't give a, you can't even give a little bit of an inch to that. You can love somebody, but you know you cannot participate in that relationship at that rate. And that's when it's time to talk about the promise ring. We make a promise while we're in this relationship that we're going to put that aside. And, it, and a lot of people have a hard time with that because they know that they still want the intimacy, but you can still have intimacy without engaging in sexual sin. And that's tough, but we can do it, okay? Okay. What if you're already in a relationship where you're already having sex or had sex? It doesn't mean you cannot do this. You both have to make a commitment to do the best you can here. If you want to keep each other in a right relationship, if you want to do the right thing with each other, that has to be a primary concern. Because outside of what God wants, you're going to lose your friendship, you're going to lose your dating relationship, and you may even lose the hope and peace that comes with it. So why have... Why do people abandon their relationships? You don't have to abandon your friends, your relationship. You don't even have to change genders. A lot of people, it's like they cannot accept it, that it gets so twisted and confusing. And before you know it, they're ready to go into unisex bathrooms. They surrender to all these other things. And that's really, really because so many people, that they can't get around the, the fact that sex isn't, sex outside of marriage is is a conflict for some people because all these other arrangements would make it so that you could live and still enjoy those things and not have to obey the rules it's like kind of going home mom and dad said you're not allowed to do that but there's a reason it wasn't because we want you feel bad okay but they want you to stay in separate rooms for a reason and listen i've been around enough people in my life that they need separate rooms because they would be all over each other, okay? And I'm not trying to be mean at all, but if I was a mom and I saw my daughter or son and they're all over their girlfriend, I'm probably gonna have to separate them because I would, it would, might take pliers or, you know, who knows? The only reason I would do that, not because I don't think that they can't love each other or be in a good relationship, because I want them to do the right thing and wait. I know that's really hard to do, especially when your hormones are going, because you could be 50 and your hormones are going. You could be 80, 70. A lot of people have hormone issues. Ask a few people. We know all about it. I have a few issues with hormones, too. And the thing is, and it's really hard to do, is to separate ourselves from somebody we love and care, from, care about, not because we don't love them, but because we know that we would be all over them otherwise. And it's better that we live in separate rooms, maybe even separate states right now, because if he was right here, he probably wouldn't be sleeping right now. And that's how that is. But a lot of people want to get around this issue. And he knows who he is, by the way. I know who he is. He knows who he is. 
and it's a good thing we're not in the same house right now because <laughs> I would be all over him. So while I'm at home by myself, I have to think through a lot of things. And I know if I, as long as I keep engaging in a behavior or act, actions, because it could happen to anybody at any age, and you realize that you would rather want to tackle him and kiss him all over, but you're going to have to wait. That's really hard to do, by the way. And it's really hard to have a long distance relationship as well. But what I'm trying to tell you, and I'm going to go into this in the second part of this, is about making a promise and dreaming the dream. Some people say they're living the dream. I agree. You can live the dream. You don't have to be ashamed of it, and you don't have to be embarrassed. But here's the thing. You have to hold to some things, things that will keep you honorable and right. And, and God is the primary purpose for this. People are going to get married. They're going to date. They're going to do things like that. And I, I, I'm of the belief that if you are out of a marriage and you are free to date, and say your ex has moved on to the next person, you are free to date. You, once somebody gives you a bill, of, a, a, a certificate of divorce, <clears throat> that's it. And it, from what I understand, there are a lot of people who are very confused about dating. Okay, And they may have been in a previous relationship or marriage but starting right here one of the things I think you have to get to the realization that God loves you and he created this magnificent place and he created a place where you could sleep and rest in him and the stars in the sky and those things that make make sleep and in his resting in his peace all that much more wonderful because I grew up with a God that loves me he loves you he wants you to get your proper rest. He wants you to be able to get to your job on a timely fashion. And I think there's a lot of people that have not had that experience. They don't know what it is to uh, love a, the love of a dad, proper love of a dad, pure. There's no hidden agenda. There's no secret. There's no shadiness, no sneakiness, none of that. Just pure love of a dad, a father. And that is what the Lord wants you to understand, that he loves you and that he doesn't want to see you get hurt, go into a relationship and then end up even more hurt. I see a lot of brokenhearted young girls and young men. They, they, they thought they figured this one out. And that's where a lot of people are, and they, they, they get stuck there, and then there's condemnation. That's not Jesus. That's not God. He loves you. And the Lord wants you to have peace because there's some people that have not let go of the past and we were there, believe you me, and sometimes we get stuck there. And that can be very difficult for somebody that's been through an ordeal, you know. And I want you to know there is a reason why you have hopes and dreams. There is why, there's, I think there was something planted in a woman's heart to dream about weddings because we in the physical will want to have the wedding the one that would be like likened to the heavenly marriage in heaven but I think there was something planted in women's hearts for that reason I know guys have a, a male version of it I'm not quite sure but when a woman wants to put a ring on the finger it's it's something it's a it's a covenant it's a bond and a lot of women have not always had that experience. They've had everything but that. So when I tell you that that promise means something, it's, it's you and that person agreeing, because otherwise you'd be separating them in the other rooms, and there you are. And I think there's some people that want to be back together, and if they want to be back together, they have to say so they can't just leave other people hanging on. And part of letting go of the past means allowing other people in or else you're just going to rack up numbers and you're going to be on your way and, and before you know it you've been caught up in a trap of so many relationships you lost count of how many people you've been sleeping with or things like that and a lot of times it's very hard to forgive yourself because then you're so in over your head and I know a lot of people have been through that they're living with somebody they know they want to do the right thing, but now they're so in over the head, they've made a commitment. And it is important to keep in mind that it would create families to be broken up. So sometimes I look at it this way. 
that you negotiate agreements like, okay, we might not got this right thing, this thing right as far as cohabitating because a lot of people have created families by cohabitating. And it, say you have found Jesus and then you know that Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commands. And this means to honor him. That means to make a commitment. What if that other person doesn't agree to that? Well, then, yeah, things will eventually change. And a lot of times, a lot of people get into relationships and they think they can test the waters. I found that it really hurts, by the way. And a lot of people get into doubt and become backslidden because they figured, well, I thought I was supposed to have be happy. And I, I know all about this, so I'm pretty much had a lot of hang-ups, and I used to get real angry because I thought I wasn't going to get my way. That's probably the worst thing that could ever happen, though, is get in your way. Really, it is. I've learned this, unfortunately, the hard way. But that doesn't mean you wreck your relationships. You do have to come to the realization and be a little more mature and realize that you, you're not making a wholehearted commitment until you really commit. And a lot of times, relationships go through seasons. And there might be a, a season to lay low. And it happens in relationships. Relationships actually go through their own season. I do believe that. Sometimes things are just passionate and strong, and you're like, wow, we can't, we need to be separated. And then you don't want to talk to each other at all. I don't know. It happens. That doesn't mean the relationship's over, but it's going through its own season for some reason or another. And men have their own moody moments, believe me. It's easy to blame women, but they do have their moments. So we'll just have to roll with it. And that's how that works because, ladies, we have to move forward in some areas. You know what I mean? You can't wait till he gets through his bad day. That's what I'm saying. But it's important to remember also that we want to be happy. We want to be right with the Lord first. And that's primarily why I want to talk about promise rings. So what if I were to tell you that some of you have been in a backsliding condition and you can't shake it. You've been sensing a lot of conviction. And conviction is good because we live in a fallen world and we have a fallen nature. No matter how much we figured, we thought we figured it out and just ended up in that doubter, powder condition. But I'm here to tell you that a lot of things that we have done would well, all fallen short. There's a lot of people that are really stuck there. They're stuck in pornography. They're stuck in all kinds of behaviors, lifestyle choices, drug addiction. They're just caught in, and it, it, you just can't undo the traps, the stronghold of drugs, alcohol. That that trap, once it gets a grip on you, it's like it won't let you go. Somebody once told me, it's like, the addiction is like doing push-ups. That's what I once heard from my dad. Well, whatever it is, the idea, the only way you can learn how to overcome that is through the authority in which God has given you. And how do you get that authority? Well, that doesn't come easily because obviously you have to repent first. And then the rest is really just trusting God. And that can be very scary because we've trusted ourselves for so long. And that might require some lifestyle changes. That might require some people in your life that you're gonna, you might have to sit down and have a talk. You might be avoiding them, but that's okay. The idea is that you're, you're not trying to avoid them per se. You're trying to avoid the behaviors that led you down this road. And I've been there. I've been there recently. And that backsliding condition is not an easy place to stay at for very long and when you get to the place where you're feeling ashamed shame is not of God guilt is one thing because guilt will get you to your knees shame is of the devil <laughs> he wants you to feel bad he wants to bring you to condemnation there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ that we know but when you get caught up in a snare that's exactly what the devil said. All these things we might have done, we might have participated with people we love and we care about, but the sin itself is what separates us, and that is the truth. And if we love somebody, we don't want to be caught up in the sinful lifestyle if you love and care for your boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, you still love each other. You just know if you make a commitment for Jesus, you say, we're going to commit to wait 
And a lot of people don't understand the promise ring. A promise ring doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it means you're going to do everything you can to avoid uh, sleeping in the same room or even the same bed and make an honorable commitment. Making a promise to each other doesn't mean you're abandoning each other and you're ignoring each other. What you are is you're putting Jesus first in your relationship. And I think that's where a lot of people are. They don't know how to make a commitment. They want to keep the relationship. But what's going to end up happening is if you don't, you're going to end up losing the, the boyfriend or girlfriend and you're losing each other's respect and you probably might lose each other forever. And that's the kind of thing that people need to hear about. A lot of times some people just get discouraged. They realize that they can't have it both ways and they give up on the person. And then when there will come a time, they'll realize that they gave up on the wrong person. And it's a vicious cycle. And what I'm trying to say is a lot of times you have to outgrow some of these things. And a lot of times I hear a lot of people that feel not worthy. We're not worthy. And when we get overcome those areas, when we realize that, yeah, I'm not quite mature in this area of relationships, but every time you set a goal with that person in your life and you ask them, can you just stay with me and work with me? A lot of times relationships, just because they go through that season, doesn't mean that you want to see the whole relationship go and you, you want to see the relationship die completely. But what ends up happening is a lot of times it does happen. And then you find yourself kicking yourself. And I know a lot of people have done that. They realize they gave up on the wrong person and they move, moved on. They wanted to have fun. And then they realize that once the fun's over, it's back to commitment and relationships. Listen, making a commitment that is not easy. It takes a while to overcome some of the things that some of us um, encountered. And there's a lot of areas where we might have been hindered. So... It takes time, and I want to encourage those who've run into commitment issues. You don't have to do anything, um, but making a choice is better than sitting on the fence, and that's kind of why so many people don't make decisions because they've been sitting on the fence. We call them fence sitters. They don't. They want to make a commitment, but they can't. They're not sure, and that all that uncertainty, all that does is just keeps you spinning your wheels. So we said all that just to be encouraging because I know a lot of people, if you communicate that, a lot of times you won't have to sit on the fence. You can, you'll be able to be comfortable wherever you're at. You'll be able to make a decision eventually. You're just not ready now. A lot of times that's really all you need to do is just wait and just trust God and really pray about it. Unfortunately, a lot of times <clears throat> if you're going to be in a dating relationship, you have to lay out the rules to say, okay, we have to put some limitations on this because this is where we um, hurt ourselves. Or, And a lot of times it's lust, it's sex, it's all these other things, and it's one thing after another. So sometimes just starting there and, and just getting right with the Lord first and saying, listen, we can put limitations. We don't have to destroy each other in our relationship, but we got to put God first. For some people, that's an opportunity to start all over. You don't have to commit to anything. The only commitment you have is making a promise and putting that promise ring because that's your promise to the Lord. I know for some people it sounds a little odd, but you're not too old to dream. You're not too old to envision hope and experience God's love. And that's really, I think, important to so many people right now. It's so nice to go to bed knowing that this big sky with all these stars was created by our Creator, Lord God. And He comforts us and protects us even when things are bad. He just gives us that rest we need. So it's, to me, it's really nice to reflect on these type of things and reflect on God's love, His peace, His mercy, His grace. A lot of times people miss out on that. They don't really get a chance to really get to know somebody. They get to know this, the sexual side of somebody. They don't get to enjoy the honor, the commitment, the friendship, the kinship, and the kindness that comes from restraining yourself sometimes. And I know a lot of people don't think that that's possible, but it sure is nice to have that kind of companionship. And you can find out with God and you can find out in relationships. Good night.